If you grew up in Kelloland, you've likely heard about the murders at Gitche Manitou State Preserve. Tomorrow marks 45 years since the violent crimes in Lyon County, Iowa, just across the state line from South Dakota. In tonight's Eye on Kelloland, Kelly Volk sits down with the lone survivor of that horrific night. It's a cold November afternoon at Gitche Manitou. All you can hear is this sign creaking in the wind. But even a quiet day on the prairie can't make you forget about what happened here decades ago. Five teenagers ventured into the park for a night around a campfire. Most of them wouldn't return home. There was gunfire, and when it was over, four of them lay dead slain. 14 year old Dana Beatty, 18 year old Stuart Beatty, 15 year old Mike Hadrath, and 17 year old Roger Essam, all Sioux Falls students. Three brothers, Alan James and Dave Fryer, were charged in their deaths. I remember one thing that Alan said to me, and he said, You take the men out first, and then the rest is easy to handle. Sandra Chesky, who was 13 years old at the time, was the fifth teen at the park. Instead of killing her, one brother took her to an abandoned farm, and another raped her. The investigation quickly became a joint effort between area law enforcement. Due to the uh, to the severity of the situation, it was uh, it was surprise, some shock. Not everybody had seen that many bodies at one time. The mass murder left loved ones in disbelief. In Sioux Falls in 1973, stuff like that didn't happen. You know, we didn't lock our doors, you know, and, and to have something like that, and then of course it, to be a, a family member, it was just unbelievable. They were all just teenagers, just out to, you know, spend an evening together, playing music, and, and uh, you know, what a way to, you know, unexpected, it was a tragedy for, for all families that were involved. Today, Gitche Manitou looks different than it did decades ago because of vandals. Sandra hopes if you visit, you'll think about the boys. Instead of spray painting and uh, thinking it's so haunted and stuff, they will just say a prayer for the boys and remember, remember them as the great people they were. She hails the four teenagers as heroes that night. These boys were the nicest, most respectable kids, and we would have never done anything to bring this on. Back in the 70s, the news of the killings made local and national headlines. But Sandra held off from telling the story herself, something she was taught to do. I walked with my head down for 40 years. And I blacked everything out. That is until she agreed to an interview with a local newspaper. She then realized she wanted a book for her grandchildren. That's why you've got the campfire. That would become a job for husband and wife team Phil and Sandy Hammond. So I grew up hearing about it and hearing snippets here and there as I was old enough to understand it. And um, at the time, it was more of a um, a lot of legends surrounding it, a lot of mystery. No one really knew what had happened, and a lot of rumors. Uh, they thought she was involved. They thought she knew the killers. Um, there was just a lot of bad rumors that went around. And so we want, wanted the truth to come out. The book Gitchy Girl took off. I started doing some events, and the outpouring from the public was amazing. I mean, every librarian, every library, every event, the sheriff's family, um, took me in as one of their own. Sandra's story helped others find their voices too. I had so many girls come up to me during these events and hug me and whisper in my ear, I was raped and you're my hero. Sandra says there's no way to fully heal from what happened that night, but sharing her story has helped. You have to talk about it. Don't hold it in. I felt like I was not good enough. Um, I started healing because I started talking and people were embracing me. Spoken from the survivor of that 
November night at Gitche Manitou. With Eye on Kelloland, I'm Kelly Vol. The three Fryer brothers are behind bars for life in Iowa. Their motive is still a mystery. Some believe it's because the teenagers had a marijuana joint with them. Sandra believes it was over sexual assault.